today I thought I'd tell you my top five favorite cancelled TV shows. So, number five is Almost Human, which um, got cancelled halfway through its first series, and there's only, I think, 13 episodes. Almost Human follows the story of John Kennex, who is a detective, um, like a police officer in the future. I don't know why I explained what a detective was, because I think everybody knows, but yeah, he's, he works, he's a cop. <laughs> Gonna start that bit again, hang on. Almost Human is the story of John Kennex, who is a cop in the year 2048. Um, and all of the cops are paired with these lifelike androids who are, you know, their partners. Um, so the android is sort of expendable, you know, if the cop's in a dangerous situation, the android can, you know, do all the dangerous shooting and stuff to preserve human life. It's kind of a messed up system, but it's how things are run. Um, anyway, Kennex hates, you know, androids. He hates working with them. He finds them really annoying. He kind of hates all technology. He's not. He's, he's, he's like an old man. He's kind of an old man. He's like, I don't like this technology. Um, which is kind of adorable. Um, anyway, all of the androids he gets paired up with don't really work out. So eventually he gets paired with a older model, which is a DRN. Like, to make it easier for humans to interact with androids, uh, this program was, this software was developed called Synthetic Soul, which basically made the androids more human, you know, gave them personality and made them very, very human, really. Um, but the model was discontinued because there were problems with the DRNs, like, being too human almost and having like psychological problems and stuff. There's sort of, they've all been decommissioned or set doing menial tasks like being cleaners or something. You know, they, all the DRNs were programmed to be cops. They need to be cops. It's, it's the only thing that makes them happy, really. Um, and so Kennex gets paired with Dorian. And, you know, magic happens. It's just, it's, their relationship is so interesting to watch. Because not only do the actors have amazing chemistry, and, you know, their relationship is written really well, and it's, you know, it's funny, and it's, you know, sweet, but it's also really thought-provoking. Um, the world in which they live completely don't see androids as people. They, they view them as objects, as commodities. But this synthetic soul program means that Dorian has feelings. He has thoughts and emotions. And doesn't that make him a real person? Like, doesn't that give him the same rights as a human being? I mean, he doesn't have any rights because he's not human. He's the property of the police department but he's a person he's he's a person with thoughts and feelings and opinions and so then doesn't that basically make him a slave but you know it, there's there's all these questions are brought up um, it's worth watching it's amazing and it deserved better it deserved more and it's it just makes me so sad that there's no more of it. It's heartbreaking, really. I've made myself sad now. Number four is Veronica Mars. Veronica Mars is the story of a high school student called Veronica Mars, um, who, you know, goes to class by day and by night is a private detective. Which sounds ridiculous, and sort of is, but it's so good, it is so... I mean, you, you hear that premise and you think, oh, it's what, it's like Nancy Drew or something? No, it's super dark. It's, it's 
full on. Veronica Mars um, was cancelled after its third series, which is awful because there was a lot more to get out of that show, I think. It could have gone to a lot more interesting places. And there's a siren. Veronica Mars had a massive fan base, a fan following, and earlier this year, um, a film was released. It did pretty well, actually, considering it was it was a, you know, an independent film that was crowdfunded. It did really, really well, and uh, hopefully that will mean that, you know, there's there will be more films in the future. Number three is. Torchwood. Um, the thing is with Torchwood, it's not, it wasn't entirely cancelled, it's sort of abandoned more so. Uh, so nobody really knows, I mean it's, it, it's over essentially, um, but it, it's, it's been left in such a way that it could it hopefully be revived one day and hopefully it will be because I love it. Torchwood is an organisation that was set up by Queen Victoria after the events of uh, the episode, the Doctor Who episode Tooth and Claw. It was set up to protect Britain from alien threat and invasion to um, scavenge any alien technology that they could find and create weapons to defend the human race. But we joined the story in 2007 when Captain Jack Harkness is, has taken over command of Torchwood in Cardiff after the, uh, the main headquarters in London has been destroyed and the Scottish one I think got lost? I think there was, I think, because Cardiff is Torchwood 3, um, the Canary Wharf Tower was Torchwood 1. But I think Torchwood 2 was in Scotland somewhere and just sort of got lost, disappeared or something. Which is, it's mentioned in one episode, I'm sure it is. And um, and I, I always thought, oh, well that's going to turn up at some point and be a huge plot point and we'll have another Torchwood. And that, it just, it never happened, unfortunately. But I think, I still think that would be a cool story because like, where did they go? How do you just lose an entire an entire Torchwood base and all of its occupants. Um, Jack is the the leader of Torchwood now and you get to meet the rest of the team. There's uh, Yanto Jones, Toshiko Sato, uh, Owen Harper and then there's Gwen Cooper as well. In the first episode Gwen Cooper is a police officer in the Cardiff Police and she becomes curious about this supposed special ops group that she's seen around some uh, some crime scenes and so she goes investigating and ends up becoming part of the Torchwood team. Um, so we sort of follow her story, you know, her learning about aliens and things and becoming part of the team. Um, and you know, I, I was never Gwen's biggest fan, especially in the early days, I found her quite irritating, but um, she, she does grow on me. I think by by Children of Earth, which was the, the third series, I had actually grown quite fond of her and, uh, and I loved her in Miracle Day. I loved Miracle Day. A lot of people hated it, you know, when the show went to America and a lot of things changed and there was big upheaval um, but I actually I really I really liked Miracle Day and I wanted more of it and I wanted a second series in America I wanted that story to be continued and it just never was um, so that was upsetting it had this amazing spirit to it and I had a, it had a heart you know there was a there was a great integrity to that show and as well used everybody's gay Everybody's a little bit gay, and it's wonderful. Sexuality in Torchwood is such a non-issue, which is wonderful because you know they have bigger things to worry about. There's aliens invading. You know they they don't have time to you know be worrying about who's kissing who. You know there's there's bigger fish to fry. Um, but I think that's just such a lovely attitude to have in like a big 
prominent sci-fi show to just have sexuality be such a non-issue is wonderful. Considering that genre shows have always had a very large um, queer following, I mean even back in the 60s with, um, with Star Trek, there was a huge gay fan base for Star Trek and genre shows have, because they deal in metaphors and they use, you know, metaphors like aliens and invasions and stuff to talk about isolation and prejudice, um, whether they be racial or sexual or whatever, um, there has always been a huge queer fan base for sci-fi shows, for fantasy shows. Um, and given that, it's weird how few genre shows have queer protagonists, um, which makes Torchwood a real gem, because not only do you have Captain Jack Harkness, who is just this big, wonderful, omnisexual um, icon, but the rest of the team as well. I mean, Toshiko has meaningful relationships with both female characters and male characters. Um, Yanto Jones becomes Jack's lover, even though he previously considered himself straight. Um, and even Gwen and Owen, who are both straight, have like had things with people of the same sex. Um, Torchwood was on the air when I was 13 or 14 maybe, uh, or maybe 15, I'm not sure, but um, as a young bisexual person, being able to turn on to one of your favourite shows and see yourself represented and see your sexuality be accepted and just not questioned, um, that actually gave me a lot of confidence and um, I think really helped me. I just, I mean, I miss it. I really do. It's one of, I mean, there's, I mean, as this list has proven, there's a lot of shows that I love that are gone and have been cancelled. Um, but Torchwood, I think, more than any of them, I really miss. I really, really just, and it, it almost hasn't, like, quite sunk in that it's kind of gone. I suppose because there was no closure, there's no definite, Torchwood is definitely over now. It's all sort of been left hanging and it feels very incomplete and it's just frustrating. I just want more of it. Right. Number two is um, the wonderful Firefly. Um, it ran for 13 episodes on Fox and then was utterly cancelled. The, the most cancelled that anything can be. It follows the story of Captain Malcolm Reynolds and the crew of his ship Serenity. So it's, it's a bunch of outlaws flying through space and, you know, doing con jobs and basically being cowboys just in space. Luckily, uh, Josh Whedon was able to do a film afterwards so it's continued on and there's comic books as well so that kind of got a little bit of closure and then number one in my books anyway is Pushing Daisies um, which was written by the wonderful Brian Fuller who is now of course very famous for doing um, ha the Hannibal series which is incredible and luckily very popular because, you know, Pushing Daisies really wasn't. Um, Brian Fuller writes a lot about death. He did, I think his, his first major project was Dead Like Me, which was about Grim Reapers. Um, and obviously Hannibal is about serial killers and, you know, death in its many beautiful, grotesque ways. Um, Pushing Daisies is almost kind of like the polar opposite of Hannibal. Hannibal is very dark and rich and beautiful, you know, it's it's very stylized. Um, and Pushing Daisies is very stylized as well, but it's very light and joyful and, you know, basically everything, like the exact opposite of Hannibal, basically. It's about a boy called Ned who can touch dead things and bring them back to life. 
but if he touches them again, they die. And if he keeps them alive for more than a minute, something else has to die. And he's, you know, a pie maker by trade. Um, and he works with this uh, private detective called Emerson, so basically they wake the murder victims up really quickly, ask who killed them, and then go and collect the reward money. And then one day, Ned and Emerson are investigating murder, and it happens to be the murder of Ned's first love. Or, you know, they go in to wake her up, find out who killed her. Um, and Ned can't bring himself to touch her again and kill her. So uh, he takes her home with him and they start going out, but they can never ever touch or she'll die. Um, so it's a wonderful premise for like a love story essentially. Also about them, you know, investigating other murders and um, baking pies and there's occasionally random musical numbers. Just, you know, every now and then as you do. It's just so cheerful and nice. And I mean there's there's sad bits in it as well, obviously, and there's you know there's I mean it is about death, so there's lots of corpses, but it's it's fun corpses. It's not like tasty corpses like Hannibal. It's you know it's funny corpses. Not tasty corpses. <sighs> Hannibal's so good. If you haven't seen Pushing Daisies, I highly recommend it. It um, it deserves more love than it gets because it's just, it's so wonderful. So those were my top five favorite cancelled shows. Um, let me know in comments and stuff if you have any other favorite cancelled shows and we can cry together about them and you know give me a thumbs up if you liked it and you could always go over to my channel and subscribe if you wanted to you don't have to but you know it would be nice if you did i'd appreciate it so yeah thanks for watching bye i need a better ending don't i yeah